All right, can you see me? Am I here? Hi, Joanne. Hi, Sarah. Okay, mine still says scheduled. Let me know if you can see me, please. Can Sarah, can you see me, Joanne? Do you see me? Am I live? Hello. Okay, Sarah says she sees me. So I'm sorry for the 30 second delay here. I should get one of those little fancy uh, countdowners. <laughs> I don't even know where I would get that. So welcome to my home. If you're new here, my name is Karen. Let me know who's here. If you could just tell me where you're from. Joanne tells me she's from the UK. I do know that Sarah is also from Maine. So hi, how are you, Joe? Uh, Joe is from Minimal Zebra. If you haven't seen her channel, you're going to want to check that out today when we're done here. Hello, Elizabeth from Kentucky. I love it how um, YouTube can bring us all together. Nancy from St. Louis, Missouri. Emma from the UK. We've got two from the UK. Annie Bankers. Now we've got two from Maine. Em from Australia. Kathleen is here as well. I'm so glad that you're here, Kathleen. So as people are coming in, I just want to tell you that I had asked oh, M from Ohio. So we got two M's. Um, I had asked what would be a good thing to cover. I had given some, you know, options on my community page and people were talking, we were talking about decluttering or, you know, different types of goals, decluttering, financial goals, diet goals. And then I think it was Sarah that brought up that it would be great to just talk about how to complete goals, especially when they take a long time, like my basement, hello. And of course, the weight loss journey also takes a long time if you're doing it in a healthful way. So what I thought we would do is today we will talk about how to achieve goals, even when they're long term. And then in future lives, we'll take one type of goal each time. So it could be, you know, one week we'll talk about decluttering, one week we'll talk about finances, one week we'll talk about health goals, you know, and we'll just kind of go through each one. So today we're just talking about goals. And I've been doing a little bit of research. We also have Michelle here from My Everyday Wife Life. And oh my goodness, I was watching Michelle way before I was a YouTuber. Um, so you'll want to check out her channel too. So that's two YouTubers that we have on here, which is always fun. Um, and so I've really been thinking about, and I, over time, over the past couple of years of decluttering, I've definitely been kind of weaving some messages in on what I've been discovering, but I kind of want to bring it all together. So when it comes to meeting long-term goals, it can be really hard because you can lose steam. You can get discouraged. You know, you have snafus. For example, last um, March when I injured my knee, you know, and then I was completely out and I couldn't do any decluttering at all. It was super discouraging. But those are the types of things that just come up in life. Uh, 128 Titanic is here. Hello. And if you can drop your first name, I don't know if you can understand me because I'm pretty sure English is not your first language. But if you can, then I'd love to share that with our other friends here. So, the most important part of a goal is your why, having a strong why. If your why is strong enough, the how you're going to figure out. So what is the, would you say, if you could accomplish one goal, what would it be? Would it be decluttering your home, garage, basement, attic? Um, would it be um, getting healthy? Uh, getting an exercise routine, losing weight? Would it be financial? What would you say is the biggest goal that you would really love to just kick into high gear in the coming weeks? Maybe you want to read the Bible through the year. What would that be? Let me know over here in the chat. It's just so important that you have your why. For example, when I started my health journey, Back in April, my why was strength, mobility, you know, with an injured knee. I knew my weight had a lot to do with it. I knew I wasn't ready to like 
be laid up, use a cane, all those things. I knew I had to start fighting back. And so it's not like I didn't want to lose weight before. It's just my why wasn't really strong enough. But when I really felt like my mobility was at risk, that was when I had my biggest why. And Elizabeth is mentioning getting healthy. Nancy is saying decluttering her basement. Sarah is saying losing weight and reading through the Bible. So that's great. You have these amazing goals that you want, but here's what I want you to do. And if you can't, obviously, you know, you're, you're listening here, so it might not be the best moment to do this, but I want you to list your top reasons why you want to achieve that goal. And then you want to post it somewhere where you can see it every day. Um, and then I think Michelle is talking about a weight loss goal. So is Joe. And I will talk about my weight loss journey at the end of this, but I know not everybody wants to hear it. So then when I do talk about it, I'll let the others drop off. Hi, Sherry from North Carolina. Um, and Michelle, I also think it's amazing that you lost 17 pounds. That's, um, that's just huge from November. That's amazing. So you want to have a good why, you want to write it down, you want to post it somewhere where you can see it. And even better is if you can also let some trusted people know about your goal so that they can support your journey and not like, especially with a health goal, you know, if I'm going to a restaurant with a friend, I really need to let them in on the fact that I'm on a health journey and I'm going to try not to eat the potatoes or the French fries. And then they can support me in the journey uh, instead of tempting me with dessert if that makes sense. It's just, it gets people on your bus to support you. And it also is a little bit risky, you know, for Michelle, Joe and I having YouTube channels a lot, we put our goals out there for everybody to see a lot of times. And there's a huge amount of accountability there. In fact, I don't know how well I would have done decluttering if it wasn't on YouTube. You know, if it wasn't for Michelle's challenge that got me started when we were going through the month of February and whatever the date was, that's how many things we got rid of. I don't know if I would have really got moving on that. So a lot of times what happens is it's not that we don't have a goal. It's not that we don't have a why, but other commitments are crowding out our ability to get that one thing done. Oh, Sunday Dawn. Hello. She's here too. And she's helping her daughter clean her house. You're my podcast today. Oh, awesome. Yay. So we're all in Sunday Dawn's ear and you want to check out her channel too. So you get a lot of homework when this is done. You're not going to want to miss these channels. Anyway, so a lot of times it's really that we're committed to other things that's taking away from the original commitment to get that garage declutter to get onto our health journey. So it honestly has to become a pretty big priority in your life. Um, Robert Bright said, we're kept from our goal, not by obstacles, but by a clearer path to a lesser goal. It's the lesser goals you're still committed to. You're still committed to your low level, he says, head trash, you know? So I have to really focus on getting the decluttering done in regular intervals, or um, I have to, with my health journey, I have to prioritize purchasing the foods that are more healthy than the junk food that might be cheaper. There's just other things that are going to have to move out of the way so that I can accomplish my goal. And so, you know, it can be particularly hard with the health journey if others in your family aren't on board, because then you're trying to buy things that they like, things that you like, but you've got to be able to push the other things out of the way. It's kind of like a river. The river is flowing. Your life is a river and it's flowing fast. You have to intentionally set the rock in the river and the rest of the river has got to flow around the rock. Your other, you know, if you had a medical appointment, if a loved one had a doctor's appointment, you would get to that appointment. You would do everything you could to get to that appointment. And so honestly, if you have, and hopefully one good big goal, one big goal to start with, then you have to set that rock in the river and let the rest of your life kind of flow around it. And you can't be still committed to all the things that you were to before that end up just being distractions, that they're pulling you away from your original commitment. And so you have to be able to remove all the things that are stopping you. You know, honestly, in the Christmas stockings, because of my health journey, everybody had to just handle the fact that they weren't getting anything that said Hershey's on it. 
Hershey's chocolate was not coming in the house because that was going to get in the way of my goal. So that just had to be out of the way. And, um, you know, hi, Jenny. Jenny is here from Puerto Rico. It's so good to see you. I miss you. Um, so that is just so important. And then when we make our commitments we, and we start working on them, then we're going to build confidence as we see ourselves follow through. And we're going to talk about how do you follow through? And if you're just coming on, Julia says that she is goal oriented and loves a challenge. And that is just awesome. So drop your goal in the chat box. We've already seen decluttering. We've already seen health journey and gaining health back. If you have a goal that you would like to get to, then drop that in the chat as well. So let's talk about reasons why we don't follow through on our goals. And a lot of times, and I've said this in the past, and I haven't said it in a long time, we tend to call ourselves names like lazy. And I don't think it's laziness. It's not that you're being lazy. It's that you're spending your time doing other things. So some of the reasons we don't follow through is we have a limited belief. Maybe your limiting belief is I'm messy and I can't get organized. Maybe your limiting belief is I can't control my intake of food after supper. We all have limiting beliefs. I'm not self-disciplined. I don't think I can. I can't afford it. You know, we all have these things that run through our head and reasons why we can't achieve our goals. And Sarah is equating the lies in our head is the temptation. That's so true. Also, we take failed moments in the past as proof that we can't succeed in the future and change. And all humans are capable of change. So that's just not true. We don't have a clear why. Like I said before, you really need to know your why. Why do you want to declutter the basement? Maybe it is that you don't want your kids to be stuck with all that mess when you're gone. That is a good why. Maybe it's that you want to have the freedom to travel and you don't want to have to maintain so many things in your home. Maybe you want your rooms to be clear so that it doesn't take long to clean so that you can just quickly wipe things down and be done and that everything has a place and you don't have things all over the table, the chairs, because you just don't have that much stuff that you need to be putting them on tables and chairs. Julia says, we are setting my first storage room. I'm a little overwhelmed, mostly due to lack of knowledge about the process. Watching you for tips. Good. I'm K Kathleen says, I'm finding that I used to be so motivated and disciplined, but I'm older and not as busy. I find it harder to be motivated. This is exactly what I need. Good tools to get me back on track. And then Sunday says, I think the perfectionism gets us sometimes too. Of uh, you can't do it perfect. It's easy to save it for later. Yes. And I, you know, I just, I'm a health coach now for the health program that I'm on. And I heard someone say, um, I know I could do better. And I said, well, is, is it that, you know, you could do better or is it that you didn't do it perfect? So in your mind, you couldn't have done it better when really you were doing the best you can and you were making progress. You just knew you could make more progress if you were perfect, but oh my goodness. And who's perfect. Um, M says, I find that I spent so long looking after my mom that I'm just exhausted. I don't want to look after myself. And that can be so true. And for either, you know, you're taking care of someone or you are a mom who's taking care of young ones. Um, Joe from Minimal Zebra says, my perfectionist tendencies definitely delay certain tasks. Yes. Yes. So, you know, we have to have a clear why. And then we have a big goal. and it, what the problem with a big goal is, let's say I want to, I know Michelle, she's decluttering the garage, right? That's a huge goal. So you have to be able to break it down into manageable tasks. If you want to declutter the basement, honestly, I don't like videos. I no longer watch a video, no shade to anyone who makes these videos, by the way, but it doesn't encourage me to watch a 20 minute video where someone cleans out their entire basement, because if it took me two years, it just makes me feel like I should have been able to do it in a day and I can't do it in a day. So they have to be broken down into actionable steps that you can easily take daily. We try to take on too much at once. You know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Jenny says, because Jenny's pregnant, yay! and she says that she wants to declutter the house before the baby comes in August. 
and she dropped off five boxes of donations to her church just yesterday. That's amazing. Michelle says, an old boyfriend of mine would tell me done is better than perfect because I'd spend too much time doing things. Yes. Or wouldn't start because I didn't think I would have enough time to do it perfectly. Sarah suggests dividing the room up into sections. And that is a great idea. That is a great manageable goal. So we have to we have to pick our goal and we have to pick one that we're going to start with. So just like you're going to have, you're going to write your goal. You're going to write down your why. You're going to be putting it where you can see it. You're going to be communicating with people around you. You're going to be breaking it down into actionable steps. And let's talk about how do you break something down and manageable steps. Just like Michelle is saying, I'm trying to let go of perfection too, like trying to make the bed perfectly. Exactly. That's a great point, Michelle. So if your goal, if you had a goal to have a clean bedroom daily, okay, you want your clothes put away, you want your bed made. You know, if you're trying to do hospital corners every day and you've got back trouble, that's going to be a very hard goal to meet. But if you can just like pull the sheets up, pull the blankets up, put the pillows on, call it a day. You know, I have a couple little fancy pillows on my bed, but all I'm doing is pulling up the blankets and then the pillows go on top. So other people don't know that underneath things are just they're tucked in enough so that you can't see it under the comforter. That's that's as good as it's going to get. Yes. And Michelle said it keeps you from making it every day. It's just uh, it just needs to make it good for, you know, good enough. Em says she can't make it without hospital corners. Okay, Em, if you want to do your hospital corners, we're going to let you. <laughs> she said her mom would get mad if she didn't do that. Isn't it funny how those things just get ingrained in us and we just can't stop ourselves? So actionable steps, what I mean by actual steps. So think of your energy level. You know, maybe if you keep a calendar, do you guys keep calendars? Do you guys keep a planner? You know me and my planner stickers. Um Joe says she does paperwork in parts. Paperwork is overwhelming and I can't do it all at once. Yes. So look at your schedule for the week. Okay. How many minutes or first of all, how many days of the week could you put in an extra, say 20 minutes? Okay. And then choose what days of the week you feel like you can do that. Like if you're going to be out on errands all day on Monday you know, you probably might know that when you get home, you're not going to have the energy to put 20 minutes into some labor intensive goal that you have. OK, just take that for example. So um, I'm going to answer you, Julia. She's saying, how did you set up your basement so perfectly, though? Uh, not sure if I can map it out. I did not. OK, so what I did first was how long do I have to spend in the basement? And I had that extra motivation of I'm making a video and I know about how many minutes gives me a video. Okay. So that was kind of how many minutes I chose when I could, but sometimes, you know, when I was um, just struggling with chronic pain in my back and in my knees, that was like two sessions to make one video. So how many minutes do you have to devote to this? And I want you to start small. So if you think, okay, I think I could do a half an hour, maybe say, I'm going to try 15 minutes or 20 minutes. Okay. And so you are, cause what you're doing is you're going to set up a reputation for yourself as the type of person who is working on that goal. And it's going to be minute driven, not task driven. And I know for me, I did not map out my basement. If you saw those early videos, I have a whole um, playlist on my basement to clutter. So if you go back to the first ones when the boxes were literally up to here, you will not see that I had any system at all. I did like what Sarah is saying. And I was sectioning off the basement. And part of that was because I could <laughs> I couldn't even walk around it. But, you know, so I'm going to focus on this part. And so what was I going to do first? I was going to get rid of the trash, right? Once the trash was gotten, was gone, then I was going to get rid of anything that was a no brainer that we was broken or things that I knew no one was going to use. I didn't even remember I owned it, you know, that kind of stuff, the easy, no brain declutters. And then once I did that, then I looked a little bit closer on what I could live without. And I got rid of that. But that was still only typically layer one to me. I knew I was going to be doing deeper declutters later, but then I moved to the next spot and I did the same thing. Trash, then no brainer, and then digging a little deeper. 
And so I honestly, Julia, I had to get through a good deal of the basement doing that before I could even think straight to be able to start organizing things. And so, you know, things kind of had a little bit of natural organization because, um, you know, my husband's tool stuff was going to go in one area, his books were going to go in another area. And then I started thinking summer stuff, you know, um, home decor, kids storage, and I just kind of started placing it. Like in my last video, I literally was moving what I had done for a shelf. That was whenever my son comes or we have overnight guests. I was like, oh, there's a better place for this, right? I'm going to move it. So I literally was moving it. So I don't try to do it perfect the first time or the second time or the third time. It's better if you go, how many minutes can I devote to this a day? And then start with the trash. Go to the easy stuff go to the harder stuff and just keep getting rid of, keep getting rid of and keep actually making sure it leaves the house. Um, Michelle said, I thought I was going to clean my garage one hour a day this week, but I have trouble committing to this. Maybe I should work for one hour a week. Yes. I think if you've ever heard of the book and you can get summaries online, you don't have to read the whole book or even listen to it. Look up Atomic Habits by James Spear. So he was saying, let's say that your goal was to go to the gym. Okay. He says, so, okay, day one, what I want you to do, lay out your gym clothes, whatever you would wear to exercise the night before. Are you going to go tomorrow? No, 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 no. Cause your job was to lay those clothes out. And for a solid week, you're going to do nothing but lay the clothes out. Then week two, lay the clothes out. Now in the morning, put the clothes on, right? Do that for a week. Week three, he was like, put the clothes on. Now, say you're going to go to the gym, drive to the gym, get out of your car, walk to the door, get back in your car, drive home. You've just made, now you're the kind of person who goes to the gym every day. You're going to do that every day for a week. And then he said, the next week, which I think we're on week four now, go into the gym, choose one apparatus, five minutes, do five minutes on it and go home. And you're going to do that for a week or until, honestly, until it feels comfortable and you're ready to move to six minutes, to seven minutes, to eight minutes. See, we stack habit upon habit and we, we start at something super duper easy. So we're not dreading it that we know we can physically do, and then we can build it over time. M says, I have all my stuff. I decluttered in my garage waiting to go to charity. I did that in 2020. So maybe for M, you know, her goal would be to start getting the stuff out of the garage. So maybe she would do one car load a week. And over time, she's going to be emptying out that garage. Julia says, I can't do an hour, but I could do 30 minutes. Our things for storage are all organized into little sections, but the shelving areas, do you just divide by type then? That's what I do. I put like items together. And then, you know, just go easy on yourself because you might go, okay, why did I do this? Because really these fit on one shelf, whereas I have this whole category, but I kind of need that shelf, you know, give yourself permission to move things around. Don't try to be perfect all at the same time. Hi, Beth. It's great to see you. Beth says 10 minutes a day is a great motivator to get a particular declutter complete. Keeps me accountable. 10 minutes is nothing. Elizabeth says, I want to clean out the coat closet, but I have spare coats and gloves in the car. If I get the coats from the car, I should clean out the whole car. <laughs> now I'm tired just thinking about it. See, that's the thing. That's you got to break it up into tasks that are manageable for you, not manageable for me, not manageable for somebody else, not manageable for the minimal mom, manageable for you. Right. So and I would, if there's somebody that you could ask for help, like, and when you ask for help, this is what I find, like with my husband, with my kids, I will, I'm, because I'm breaking it down to a manageable task for me, I need to break it down into a manageable task for them. So tomorrow, could you give me 20 minutes to help me in the basement to do, to move your tools from this to that? And I try to be specific. This is exactly what I'm asking you to do. These are how many minutes I'm asking for. And I try to stick to that commitment, you know, and what I love is if I have committed to 15, 20 minutes in the basement and I have the time, motivation and energy to do an hour, I can always add time, right? But it's a lot harder to go in there for an hour, but then only spend 20 minutes and your back hurts, your knees hurt and, or you're just 
you, you hit a wall and you need to stop. Well, now you feel like a failure because you planned for an hour and you only did 20 minutes. Whereas if you had planned for the 20 minutes, but then could add time, now you feel like a great success, right? So it's all about mindset. Sarah, I'll talk to you later. I'm so glad you were here. Thank you. I hope this helped. Um, and Allie says she's decluttering beauty supplies and cleaning and medicines as we speak. Oh, I love it that we're just talking about it and she's just doing it. So once you have figured out how many minutes you can do, what days of the week you can do that this week, I tend to plan weekly because my days don't stay the same. My weeks don't stay the same. So then you're going to set an appointment with yourself. And if you keep a planner, digital planner, paper planner like me, you know, I'm a paper planner girl, then set an appointment for yourself, you know, at one o'clock. I used to do when the girls were having their lunch since I homeschooled. So somewhere between 12 and one would be when I would go down. So at noon, say I would have a 20 minute appointment with myself to go down to the basement and do some decluttering. So if you set an appointment that you plan to keep, then that is just, honestly, it's gold. Uh, Michelle says, I think I would do one day a week at the gym for like a month, several months, two days a week at the gym after that. See, it's great. You know, you find what works for you. I need to apply that to everything else I do. Yes, it is. Shut up my phone. It is honestly magical. And that is the biggest thing that I learned over the past two years is to find small chunks of time. And then over time, it really does make it a huge impact. 15 minutes a day over a year is just a tremendous amount or even two 20 minute sessions a week over time. The problem is we want it done yesterday. But for most of us that come to this channel, we're a little bit on the older side. But you know what, we're wiser and we're smarter than we were when we were younger. And I really wish I knew this when I was young. I really wish when I was in my 20s and having kids that I had this mindset of taking small chunks of time. I don't think I would have felt so defeated. You know, one of the big mistakes that I have mentioned is I would take everything out of the coat closet and then halfway through it, I would fizzle out and now I have a huge mess. So who wants to go do another closet when that's your experience with the coat closet? You have to not only take small chunks of time, but small chunks in the space that you're trying to improve or small chunks in what you're trying to do to improve your health, whatever that is. Um, so the other thing that I do is, so I, now I have set, I've got it in manageable chunks. I know what day, I know what time, I've got it in my planner. I'm also going to set an alarm on my phone because I am notorious for forgetting, even like because I do coach calls now, I forget a coach call. So I'm setting alarms. <laughs> all day. And then if I don't remember what the alarm is for, I look at my planner <laughs> because I could forget that too. Joanne says work smarter, not harder. Amen. And I know Michelle from my everyday wife life says that all the time, work smarter, that not harder. So, so then when you're done, you know, either you have, let's say you knew you could do Tuesdays and Thursdays to work at your goal, right? So every, maybe every week you're going to set new appointments or you might, what you might do is if you have a life where you never know what's going to happen from day to day, I could imagine Dee from D lovely life. She takes care of her mother. I could imagine that could be her not knowing day to day what's going to happen. So when you finish the first appointment, that would be a good time to set the next appointment. Or maybe in the morning, you know, you're looking at, you have your goals right there where you can see them and you're going to see that goal in the morning and go, okay, is there a time today that I could work on that goal, right? All right. So what do you think? What's your takeaway? What do you think you're going to do after this live to help move the needle towards your goal? Let me know here in the chats. Is there a takeaway that you have? What was your goal? What it, you can let me, you can share your why if you'd like to with all of us and I'll read them out loud. But what do you think you could take away? M says, I feel motivated to get the stuff taken to charity. Yay. And you know, that became a big issue in 2020 because nobody wanted it. So, but we can do it now. Kathleen says she's going to make my why list. Yes. So for me, my why for decluttering is I don't want my kids to um, have to deal with it. That is true. 
I don't want to manage it anymore because it's exhausting. I don't want to carry it anymore because I feel like a failure every time I look at it, which is why I never went to the basement. I would like to have the freedom that if we ever decided to downscale and move out of this house, that it wouldn't feel like this huge, huge task that I would, I can't even imagine if I had to declutter that basement and I had an attic too. I took everything out of the attic. So that's pretty much empty now. Um, I can't even imagine. Um, Nancy says, put time into my schedule to declutter. Michelle says, I do that with my diet. When I try to make changes, I just do one thing at a time, usually for the month. And Michelle, she's already working at it. She's doing a cabinet. Um, Joe from Minimal Zebra says, I'm going to contact my sister about taking my declutter pile to donation for me. Julie says, don't laugh, but I think I want to put the shelving on one wall only. That is all for the whole week. That is awesome. No, I'm not going to laugh. You're doing just what I say, breaking it down into small goals. Elizabeth hopped on the exercise bike during the chat to get my exercise day. Awesome. Beth says, what would you do with the jewelry you've inherited and don't want? But it is too soon after a death to consider it leaving your home. And yet you want to have it honored, not just put it in a box. Hmm. Um, Michelle. Okay. I'm going to get back to that, Beth. Drink more water, eat no gluten, eat more salads, work on one thing a month. Allie says, I'm decluttering something every day, whether it's one box of stuff, one little drawer, one shelf. I'm doing something every day, large or small, little by little. It adds up to something big. I'm also going to, M says, I'm also going to write out my why about losing weight and getting fit and strong. I'll put it where I can see it every day as I tend to forget about stuff like that. The Helpful Home. I'm going to start back into my photo organization. I need to do that too with smaller goals that are more attainable. Yay. Jeanette says, this is so motivating. I will start exercise atomic steps tomorrow. I will find my training shoes. That's awesome. That's awesome. Joe's asking for Sunday's help with photos. Okay, Beth, I just thought of something. What if you got a memory box, the kind that has a place that you can put a photo in the top? And what if you put your loved one's photo in the top and it held the jewelry? Now it's in a box. You know where it is. It's going to fit in a small space. And then when you're ready to revisit it, you can revisit it, whether it's to give it to others that you love and that would honor your loved one by giving it to people that you know would cherish it, whether that is to even if it was like expensive jewelry that you could sell. And maybe instead of keeping, maybe it would either do something that you know that loved one would love to see you do to enjoy yourself, or maybe it would be a donation in their honor or in their name that you could donate to a favorite charity in their name. So that's just a few ideas off the top of my head there. Um, Allie says, my huge recycle barrel that gets picked up every other week by the city. I plan on having it full to the top for pickup just by decluttering. Michelle. Okay. February, I'm going to commit to riding my bike twice a week in February. Awesome. Not every day. Minimal Zebra says a shadow box with a photo and the jewelry. That's another good idea. Thank you, Joe. Um, Sunday, I'm going to make it a series, Michelle. I've just had two lofty of goals, but I think I'm uh, film smaller bites and just encourage us all to start together. That's a great idea. I actually have photos that I need to go through as well. Hopefully before my son leaves next Friday for his move to Illinois. Um, yeah. So I would like to just give you a little plug. Um, I've lost 80 pounds on my health journey, which I never believed that I could. Um, if you would like to know more when in all of my videos, and I'll put it in this live in the description box, I always put a link to a jot form. And I'm the one who receives the information that you put on the job form. And then I set up a call with you and I can talk to you about the plan that I am on. If you're interested, I do coach that. And you, it does come with a, a coach. It comes with a community. It comes with coaching. It comes with foods um, so that you're not measuring, you know, it's all clean eating, but it's measured out for you. So you're not doing that. There's one meal you make every day, but that's something that we can chat about. You can get the information from me. If you'd like, I have it. If you look at the videos from the past week or two, it's, it's been in my videos for the past few months in the description box. Um, you can, you know, um, fill out that form and I can set up a time to chat with you separately on the phone privately. So yeah, I've even been thinking about, um, you tell me what you think guys, 
you're my test group right now of offering to coach people in other areas. Cause I have learned a lot about coaching and helping people one-on-one to accomplish their goals. I just don't honestly have no idea what I would charge for rates. So I have to think through that, but if that's something you think is a good idea or that people would actually be like, if you think you might be interested in it, then maybe others would. But if you're like, nah, I think I'm good. I'm good with the videos. Then you know, it wouldn't be, but you can let me know what you think about that. It's just something I've been noodling around in my head. Um, M says, I'm going to have fabulous February where I can get stuff started. I love that. Beth says, that's a great idea to have it in a photo box. Um, okay. Michelle says, baby steps. Um, thank you, Michelle. She said, that's amazing, Karen. Congrats on your weight loss, Karen. You're doing great. Thank you, honestly. And I'd like to say that, that as you start accomplishing your goal, you're giving yourself a reputation with yourself. And I think your reputation with yourself is more important than your reputation with anybody else. Jenny was actually, yes, Jenny was one of my clients and I was her coach, but now she's having a baby. She lost about 40 pounds and it made her it possible to have a healthy pregnancy. Yeah, you did amazing. Oh, Kathy's here too. Um, Kathy says, I've tried for some time to lose weight and this program works. Thanks, Karen. Awesome coach. Thank you, Kathy. It's so good to see you. She is one of my clients as well. Em said, I wouldn't mind if you come and live with me to keep me motivated. <laughs> that would probably be really fun, Em, honestly. Um, they say it takes 28 days to make something a habit, which is so true. So that's the other thing. And thank you, Michelle, for saying that because, you know, the reason why it takes 28 days to form a habit is because it takes 28 days for it to become like brushing your teeth. You don't think about brushing your teeth. You don't get up and go, now, what was I going to, you know, we all know when we get up, we're going to brush our teeth. It doesn't take any mental process to brush our teeth anymore. We know just, you know, we have our little pattern on what we do. It's the same with all your other goals. When you do something for that long, it just like if you attach your goal of when you're uh, accomplishing that goal, if you attach it to an event, let's say lunch. So for me, whenever the girls were having their lunch, that's when I would go declutter. So it was attached to a time and it just becomes routine. So it takes about 28 days for you not to have to think about it. You just do it. And so that's why it's so important because when we have to think about what we're going to do, it's kind of exhausting. Just like I used to dread editing decluttering videos. It was so hard. It took hours and hours and hours. It just felt like this random mess. But now that I've done it for a couple of years, now they're the easier ones to edit, which is so funny. Okay. And I lost 60 kilograms in 2019. I've put on a lot back. Yeah, it, it makes me feel so depressed. Yes, I so understand how that feels. Brenda says, I'm in between commitments, but wanted to pat myself on the back and say that I worked on my office and paperwork for January and made regular strides so hard. Yes, paperwork. Ugh. Yes, that's awesome. Julia says, I love it when you go to friends' homes and help them organize. Yes, I hope to do that again. You'll see me. I filmed um, helping my son with his closet in his apartment. You'll see that soon. And then once he moves, I'll be hopefully getting into people's homes again. Hopefully the, some of the women that you already saw. Um, Julia, blah, 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 blah. Brenda says, now I'm going to do what I can do until the end of the month and onto a different room. Better not perfect. Yes. Something is always better than nothing. Always. Hands down. Beth says, congratulations, Karen, on your weight loss. Thank you. You are so considerate, thoughtful. I think the coaching in other areas would be great. I know you'll be brilliant at it. Thank you. Um, Brenda said, my new room is my sewing room. I need to figure out some reasonable goals. Yeah. So I'm going to come back and we're going to do more lives. Um, and I think probably next time we'll probably talk specifically about decluttering. And what I'd like to do is to take different goals, like we could do planning. I know prayer journaling was another one that was brought up. Health journal, uh, health journey was another one that was brought up. So what I'd like to do is I'm, I can't necessarily commit to, I'm going to do this every Friday, but it seems like Fridays is a good time for me because I don't tend to have calls on Friday. Um, so Keep watching my community tab for I'll always announce ahead of time or Lord will and the creek don't rise. That's the goal is to announce ahead of time. And what we can do is we can take goals, you know, month by month, week by week, however it works out. We could talk about ones because I like the fact that this is interactive and I can hear directly from you as I'm talking. 
So I really appreciate all of your input and I really appreciate all of you being here. Um, Jeanette says, I think you'll be a really good coach motivator. Thank you, Jeanette. Brent, uh, Beth says, great job, Brenda, on clearing your paperwork. And I just love how you're chatting with each other. And this will go up when you see a YouTuber on live, the way that YouTube is doing it now, I think it does sometimes come up on your home feed. You can let me know, but, um, you have to, if you go to their home page, um, and click on, I think there's a spot where you can click on live and see all the lives that they've done, but this will live on YouTube. It will continue. So, uh, you'll get to watch it back if you miss the front of it, or if you're just coming on now. So don't worry if you missed it now. Um, I do need to, to head off. But I so loved being here with you. I hope you, and next time we'll probably do decluttering since that's kind of what my channel tends around. Perhaps next time we'll talk about prayer journaling and maybe we could widen it out to um, more journaling than just prayer journaling so that it will apply to you even if you don't do prayer journaling. Um, hugs and kisses to you too, M and Beth. Um, it's just so great. I love you guys so much. And I hope you always know that God loves you. Really, God loves you. And I love you too. And hopefully I'll see you soon. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye. Hi, Barbara. <laughs> Bye. Have a great day.